Our next speaker is Tang Lim from University of Missouri. Uh, he's going to talk about development of short educational videos for CAFA related topics. I'm Tang Lim, University of Missouri Extension. Um, in the last year or so, some of us, Ray Massey, um, see this, this is another proof that we, we actually, egg engineers, get along with a lot of those other folks. See on this team, we have egg economist, Ray, we have swine vet, Corey, and we even have nutritionist, animal scientist, Marshall. So we've been summoned to, so the reason that we put together some of this was that I think a lot of us are familiar with a scene like this, you know. Um, so this is kind of a strange thing. When we talk about order complaints, CAFO issues, a lot of us immediately it's about swine operations. Most of them are. But occasionally, we got some of this. The Powell Garden is a, a rather remote um, botanical garden outside of um, Kansas City area. So um, when, when this, see the implication of this is that there, there was a local um, beef operations. They actually sell the product on farm, which was doing very well. And then they were pushing um, to apply to another permit and then see that, that numbers. 6,999. See that, that the first thing that came to me when I said that, really do you guys have to push it that hard? I think it would look a lot better if you go for 6,000 instead of 6,999. So a lot of us know what that means, but for those of you who don't, is that if you one head more, that means you will be in the class A permit. And in our state, class A is a lot more, um, I would say, rules. The other thing is that Class 1A requires the um, order management plan in the, in the state of Missouri. Class 1B or below, they don't. And nowadays, they don't even give up Class 2 permits anymore. It's not even an option. So that's, that's some implications that we see that, and it's understandable people are upset because it's easy, especially closer to the bigger city, you go to anyone, hey, do you support our environment protection? Do you dislike KFOs? because they're bad, you know. So this is some of those efforts that, but oftentimes, when we get to a scene like that, it's really too late, you know. When people are already routing up issues like this, events like this, they don't care whether you're from where. You're from Extension, you're from Missouri. If you stand up there and say, hey, I'm here from Missouri, uh, University of Missouri, I'm happy to answer questions. They don't even want to listen to you anymore because it's too late. So. What triggers us of doing some of this, and then here's another thing. So the uh, Missouri um, Senate Bill 391, okay? So what that is, and it's still ongoing right now because um, they're, they're going through some votings and they're going through some um, Senate votings. So what it says is that uh, basically under this new proposed rules or Senate bill is that um, they're not going to allow um, any more stringent rules than the state level, from the county level. Because a lot of the counties, we have about 20 of our counties that have their own individual um, county health ordinances. Some of them are triggered from the county commissions, but to some extent, when some county commissioner says no, the health board would actually say, we're going to do this. So. You can see that's, that's why some of those concerns and some of those senators then. And then we have another one from that Paul Garden area, that, that senators from the Kansas City area. He actually wants more order control. So at the same time, we have all these conflicting Senate mill going on and then trying to fight for things like this. So, so what we talked about was that we as an extension team with the shrinking workforces um, we really don't have the time to go out to individual county and try to talk to people. And even when we did that, um, it's often too late. So we're trying to put together some of those things and throwing them out there, out there um, on different formats. One of these formats is that um, can we as extension people trying to stand in the middle of the ground and then trying to develop something like this, and you're going to get a feel of this. So some of this 
is that um, it's unfortunate that when we plan this, um, it's a little bit based on the funding we could get. It's a little bit based on um, how much we can do, and we're still learning this. Um, so we're not trying to promote or be the advocate of KFOS, because at any time people go to the extension website, they can find beginner farmers information, they can find safety information, they can find all kinds of information except KFOS. You know, so that's the purpose for setting some of these things. So we want to tell people there's good players, there's bad players, but there's not an easy way to educate the general public. So we're hoping some of this effort um, that um, we, we try to throw them out there so that people eventually will find some of this information, those who care. Um, and then um, we told ourselves that the intention is that we want to keep these videos very short. You know, so that's, that's the whole purpose. Um, so the procedures, first of course is looking for money. Second is that we started looking at, okay, we're not going to be able to hire a real professional to go shoot a bunch of professional videos. So the uh, easy way is to use the whiteboard, you'll get to see it. Um, and then we started with writing the scripts. So our small team helped edit the scripts among ourselves and trying to improve them a little. And then when we created the videos, we actually showed them to classes and then we showed them to our staff. A lot of time they were the staff from our different departments. And it just so happens that some of these staff are actually living out in those counties that are going through some of those debates. So it works out very well because they actually tell us, well, even though I work in agriculture, uh, college of agriculture, really when a KFO is proposed near me, here's my concern. I really don't know. Or here's my concern from my neighbors. So it really worked out very well. And the feedback from the younger generation, the students, is very helpful too. So we gather a lot of those, a lot of iteration. Um, and then we finally um, have the artists. We, we go to contract with a, a website called Fiverr. That is a group that is very good at doing those, um, the whiteboard videos. I think that we actually have time to, to show it a little. Um, so, so ultimately what we did was that we created two things. One is um, a website that housing all these different videos so that it gives a little bit of explanation, some backgrounds. We don't want it to be too lengthy. And then each of those, for example, the introduction, that talks about uh, what this different series, um, different individual clips of videos is about. And then Ray was creative enough that he actually created what we call um, a subscribable um, channels on the YouTube. So we call it k Central. So if you go to YouTube channels, you Google k Central, you'll be able to click into that. So we, as of right now, we have about six videos on there. The goal is we're going to try to create more depending on the demand and how the outcomes of the debates that we have and, and um, um, oppositions that we have or some of those conversations. So the website, the YouTube channels, and then, for example, the introduction videos. Because um, we went to the port board um, saying that, well, we want to help to start those conversations. But keep in, uh, in mind that we're not going to be pro this or that. So this is what we want to deliver. And then we, we proposed six uh, videos. We got three of them funded. And then at the end of it, we created, ended up created four but their legs are an introduction video why we're doing this. So therefore, this is it. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to. Let me play in this mode. Coming to a field near you. Improved pork production efficiency. You guys creating okay? environmental benefits. Today's modern confined pork production is more environmentally friendly than in the past. It uses fewer natural resources to grow safer, more wholesome food. How has the pork industry become more environmentally friendly? Through the use of modern technologies that include balanced, specialized nutrition, using enzymes such as phytase and synthetic amino acids, as well as installing low-leakage waterers, computer-controlled heat 
heating, cooling systems, automated feeding systems, and creating an environment that allows pigs to have less contact with their own manure has helped. These modern systems capture, store, and recycle manure to replace chemical fertilizers in nearby crop fields. Modern confined pork production has changed markedly from growing pigs in the outdoors to extensive control of temperature and humidity that allows for risk mitigation of animal illness and disease. Pigs are not exposed to extreme temperatures. Predator. So, I don't think we want to go through the whole three minutes of this, but this is just giving you a, a sense of what some of these are about. And each individual video is just a little bit different because it depends on the artists that we hire to do this. And sometimes we actually hire two or three different artists um, to do those and then we, we sit down and select those and sometimes we do another one just to merge some of those good stuff together. So that's the iteration that we had about. Um, so. So from that website, we, we ended up created um, a whole series of, of others. For example, that the one that I just showed talks about some of the environmental impacts or improvements over the years. I would say um, that particular one is one that is more pro KFOS. That is the one that is most easy to lead some of the people to, to, to think that those KFOS uh, those videos are more advocating for KFOS, but it's not necessary that way. Um, so there is improvement that we need to be doing. Um, some other questions um, that we have gotten from the audience is definitely antibiotics. That's why we got one funded, but we decided that the, the content was too long, so we broke it into two. So that talks about antibiotic resistance and antibiotic residuals. So those are very different things. Um, and then Ray did this one, the economic impacts. So um, if we have a K force coming into our county, what does it do to the county level economics and what does it do to my property values? So those are pretty hands-on stuff. And it just so happens that um, Kevin Yanni was on, on this team with us um, two years ago. We were doing some biosecurity training, so we throw that up there too. So the, the lesson is that um, the good thing about this is that the videos are on YouTube 24-7. So that's our goal. We don't have the time to go out to all those individual counties and talk to people. Um, so hopefully some of those interest group will be able to find that. And so some of the statistic, and this is just us pushing it out a little in a more quiet, um, not, not promoting it type of mode because we're trying to learn what else should we should be doing. So some, some of those statistics, pretty good. I think that we're not really uh, out there and saying to, to help, telling the world that you guys should click on this and try to learn more. Um, so the ultimate thing is that we're hoping that by creating some of this is that people would start to talk about this. Um, that they want to trust us that some of this or most of this uh, are more scientific based information. Um, but then here, here is the best part that I save for, for this group to be thinking on is that when we push this out, release it on the university website and KFOS, we got phone calls. So we have people um, that are not happy about what we do. Um, so they, they actually go through our dens and denlets and say, hey, we want meetings. So ultimately what they, they, they wrote lengthy letters to us, to the dean, and then the, at the last page, the, the ultimate request is that we, we politely require or request you guys take down all these videos. So, so we had conversations with them. Of course, at the end, we're basically telling them we're not, t not taking this now. Again, the message is, if you want beginner farmers, information, we have them. You know, we have all kinds of information. It's only fair for us to be out there when people have questions about KFOS. Here are the information channels. So some of those talking points are listed here. So um, some of those um, um, uh, Really, the, the demand that they were wanting to talk to us is that, that your videos basically portray KFOS 
That's the best thing, you know. Um, but look, look down the list. Reducing egg workforce through industrialization of animal production harms rural economics and pollute waterways. So where is the proof of some of those? Um, and then like in one of the introductions that, introduction videos I was saying that, well, some of these machineries are $400,000, $500,000. The reason that some of these farmers have gotten to be more um, bigger, more industrialized, more professional, well, it's because of this equipment are getting more expensive. They can't live on the 10 acres and trying to do some of those things. So therefore they're getting bigger, but they just don't like that. So, and then some of those are easy to, to counter. For example, they were saying that the confined agriculture is unnecessary to protect hogs from extreme temperatures and predators. Uh, I know some, I think that if you Google it, the happy pigs are always on the green pasture, you know? But how many green pastures do we have year round? You know, so those are the things that we, we try, and then I think that we're, we're, we're getting some momentum because of, of this type of conversations. It's actually good. We want it to be both sides trying to approach us to be um, starting talking and be thinking, especially the younger generations. Um, and hopefully, again, we're trying to keep all this short and trying to float them around out there so that people can eventually find them and do that. So, um, last slides. What else should we be thinking, you know? So again, this, this is more of starting the conversations with the general public. We have our own staff who live out in the county, who work for the College of Agriculture, and those are some typical questions that they ask that we put answers in those videos. Um, so to be thinking about, are we really advocating for CAFOs? What about the efficient productions versus small family farms? So it was fun that to read their letters. Um, there were some claims that saying that um, they believe that every farmer should be small and be connecting with their customer base. But nowadays, it's, you know, you and I know that it's not necessarily the case. So future videos, we have requests saying that they don't even know how the permitting issues, uh, how the permitting process is done. So, but that, those things could be more in the state by state. Um, so we have to be careful um, where we put our resources into. Um, auto management, mortality management, a lot of other issues that people have questions on. But I think that some of those very important ones when it comes to uh, antimicrobial res resistance, residuals, some of those basic ones are actually there. So ultimately, the questions that at the end of the day that we, we ask ourselves, we ask among our own group is why are we doing this? Basically, we're not really getting any credit for doing things like this. You know, it's not considered publications. It's sucking a lot of our time. It sometimes draws criticisms. A lot of time it does. But we still do this, you know? All right. Um, any ideas? And if you'd like to share with us, um, Try to find one of us. We're pretty much interconnected right now. And then um, just a quick announcement. Some of us, especially the organizing committee for this, we're going to try to have a, a group meeting face to face because we don't get to talk to each other that, that frequently by face to face. So we're going to have a, a little follow up um, meeting right after this session so we can talk about what we learned from this workshop what we can do better to improve our future conferences. So everybody is welcome to that. We're going to be meeting here for about hopefully an hour or so so that we can all leave from here. So any questions to this? I think we, we're doing good on time, right? Yes, we are. So. Any questions? Oh, yeah. So the cost. Um, it depends on the length. Typically, if you're talking about, say, three hundred, um, the three minutes videos, it will cost you anywhere from three to five hundred. But then, if you want a modifications, um, or if you want to combine some other stuff, it will cost a little bit more later. But a lot of the time when they throw a brand new video at you, they'll be willing to, the artists usually, they'll be willing to um, modify within the first, say, 72 hours. If you get back to them saying, that, hey, can you improve this or that, there's usually no cost. So it's very easy to work with. Yep. Yes. 
Fiverr. F I V E R R dot com. Fiverr. Yep. Are your videos right now specific to Missouri? No, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Where were the commodity groups involved in any of the planning or development? Did you bounce it off them before you took it out? Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention. So, um, oh, I can't see it now. So, we did um, showcase a couple of this at our um, Missouri Pork Expo. And we actually got an opportunity to show it to some of those um, community groups. Um, so, it, well, it's, it's, a, it's a pig producers group. So, they did provide some pretty good um, inputs to it. For example, um, during the iterations when we moved the nutrients from, from the farm to, to the field, um, the artists had no idea what the farm looked like. They actually have a couple of smokestacks talking about um, factory farms. So they quickly point, hey, that's not our farm. You know, you need to change that. And some of those are helpful, um, but some of those requests are a little bit against what we want to do because a couple of other guys actually say, hey, can you change that pig so that it smells better? <laughs> can you put a couple more smiley pig pigs up there? So those are the things that we say, um, maybe not. Um, we can be bought, but not for $2,500. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm assuming in terms of sponsorship, you were avoiding requesting the commodity you sponsored or? No, actually, like I say, we, we proposed six individuals to um, the Pork Center of Excellence. We got three of them funded. So for any of those videos that we actually used the fund to create that, we did put the logos at the end. Um, like the introduction, the introductory videos, I felt that we needed to do it, so I actually used my salary savings to do it. But of course, I'm going to say this this video is created by Tang Lim Salary Savings. You know, it's those things. But that that also draws some criticism. They, they were saying that they, they assume all of these are sponsored by them. They say you didn't have enough clarity, but it's it is what it is. Well, that was All right. Thank you. Thank you.